Florida is on its way to banning and criminalizing alternative meat. We introduce you to Next Gen Cattle Company, plus lots more crew. Let's ranch it up. Good day, everyone, and thanks for riding with us on this all-new episode of the Ranch It Up Radio Show. I'm Jeff Tigger Earhart. And I'm Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck. A big thanks goes out to our partners, RanchChannel.com, the world-famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sale, the DLCC Ranch, Jorgensen Land and Cattle Company, Stockman's Livestock Exchange, the American Gelvy Association, I'm a Gene Ingredients and Pharma 10, Westway Feed Products, Medora Boot and Western Wear, Allied Genetic Resources, Allied Feeding Partners, LivestockMarket.com, EquineMarket.com, AuctionTime.com, RFD TV, Wrangler, and this fine radio station. Cow Country News, you know, the cow stuff. Diving right into the news, and this is our top story because it is a big one. Let me read you the headline. Florida is on its way to banning and criminalizing alternative meat. Governor Ron DeSantis wants to keep lab-growing meat out of Florida. Over the last several months, Florida legislators have been quietly working to ban and criminalize the production and sale of cell-cultivated meat across the state via the introduction of two bills. House Bill 1071 and Senate Bill 1084. On February 6th, the state's House of Representatives passed Senate Bill 1084, which now sits on DeSantis's desk awaiting a signature. And if his previous comments are any indication, he will be pulling out his pen soon. Recently, DeSantis said in February while visiting the South Florida State College Hardy campus, I know the legislature is doing a bill to try to protect our meat. You need meat and we're going to have meat in Florida. He went on to add, we're not going to have fake meat. That doesn't work. Cell cultivated meat, to be clear, differs from traditional veggie burgers and meat alternatives like Impossible Burgers. As the Congressional Research Service defines, cell cultivated meat is developed in a lab grown from a sample of animal cells that does not require the slaughter of animals. The development of cell cultivated meat, the CRS explained, happens in five steps. The biopsy of animal cells, cell banking, cell growth, harvesting, and food processing. It's an industry that has heavy oversight in the U.S. by both the Food and Drug Administration and the United States Department of Agriculture. As the CRS noted, there are about 150 companies around the world involved in the cell cultivated meat industry, 43 of which are based in the U.S. Of these 43, just two companies, Good Meat and Upside Food, have FDA approval in the U.S. While it's still a relatively small industry, it's one with major financial backing. According to the CRS, some $3 billion has been invested in its growth via private capital. An additional $5 million has been issued via the National Science Foundation in research grants, along with an additional $12 $12 million in grants by the USDA National Institute of Food and Agriculture. Florida, however, isn't alone in the pursuit to block the production and sale of this type of meat. As Fast Company reported, Tennessee is considering a similar bill that would impose a $1 million fine for selling cultivated meat. Alabama also passed a bill to ban the sale and manufacturing of it, making it a Class C felony. This means that if you're caught selling cell cultivated meat there, you could wind up in prison for up to 10 years. And as Food Dive reported, Texas also implemented legislation around how cultivated meat can be labeled and marketed. More from this article can be found at ranchitupshow.com in the show notes with additional links. In other news, the National Cattlemen's Beef Association and Public Lands Council responded to the Bureau of Land Management's release of the updated Greater Sage Grouse Management Plans. These plans will shape public land use across 10 different states and tens of millions of western acres. After completing revisions to the plans in 2015 and again in 2019, the agency is currently amending 77 separate land use plans across the west and could potentially designate millions of acres as new areas of critical environmental concern. Despite this incredibly expansive scope, the BLM provided only 90 days to comment on the draft environmental impact statement and only 60 days to comment on the proposed 
areas of critical environmental concern. Here's the background. The sage grouse habitat that has been declining across the West due to a variety of factors, including catastrophic wildfires, urban development, and the spread of invasive grasses. As a result, more than half of the remaining prime sage grouse habitat exists on BLM acres. The pressures on sage grouse habitat vary from state to state, from ecosystem to ecosystem, and sometimes from county to county. One size fits all conservation strategies are ineffective for this species. Habitat management must be tailored to local needs in order to achieve the best results for the bird. The expertise of local stakeholders, like federal grazing permittees, will be crucial for conserving this species. The Public Lands Council president and Colorado Federal Grazing Permittee, Mark Rober, said years of research, including a very recent and comprehensive 10-year study, support the fact that managed livestock grazing is compatible and can actually benefit the bird. He went on to say the agency must look at the science and leverage livestock grazing as a tool for strengthening the sagebrush step, preventing wildfire, and conserving this iconic species. If there are particular stories or news updates that you would like us to follow and you want some more information on, reach out to us at any time. Send us an email, ranchitupshow at gmail.com. And you can call and text us anytime at 707-RANCH-20. That's 707-726-2420. Last week on the Ranch It Up radio show, we featured Bryce Kelly with Richie Tugs giving us an update, kind of a product update, if you will. And we had a couple questions in regards to the buttons on the Richie Tugs. So Bryce Kelly, uh, any updates on that? Any changes maybe to those buttons? You know, uh, we do have a version 2.0 of our button or the backing that goes on the other side of the tag. And, you know, it was a rough start when we first launched that product uh, back in during the COVID years, but we've made a few big improvements to it. And we really believe that this version 2.0 of the button helps tag retention. So okay. so the buttons aren't going to break as, as easy? They're not going to break and they've got more of a dome shape that snugs against that ear just a little bit tighter to help thing, prevent things from getting caught behind the ear. Uh, my last question, Richie, for those of you that remember, and we're going to date ourselves, you go back, Richie had that original arrowhead. I'm not sure if that's what it was called, but it had that arrowhead, and you had to use a punch, and you had to kind of cut a slot in the ear. Of course, now we've gone to the button tags. Do you still offer that arrowhead? You know, we do. Uh, do people buy that thing? We we have a very loyal, rabid base of followers for that product. They swear that if you're willing to go through a little bit of extra effort that you spoke of, it is the best retention tag in the world. So we try and we tried and we tried to come up with a an easy way to install it and just haven't quite got there yet but i mean we we've got a bunch of old school ranchers that love that tag bryce kelly with richie livestock id and richie tags i appreciate the update for more information head to richie check them out on facebook richie livestock id it is that time when we need to take a quick break. Now, coming up, we're going to go to the Flint Hills of Kansas, home of Next Gen Cattle Company. We're talking Charlay. We're talking Beefmaster. We're talking Next Gen Angus X Bulls. Keep it locked right here. The Ranch It Up Radio Show will be back after this. Get ready for the Western experience of a lifetime. The world-famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sale is back, and better than ever. Join us May 16th through the 19th in Mile City, Montana. From the finest bucking stock to electrifying horse racing, this event has it all. Don't miss out on the kickoff concert featuring Josh Turner and special guest Chancey Williams. Mark your calendars and saddle up for the world-famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sale, where the spirit of the West comes alive. Get your tickets at BuckingHorseSale.com. The quick, fast, easy, all-in-one location to look at bull sales. Head to ranchchannel.com. Check it out on your phone, ranchchannel.com. All the information on one page at your fingertips, videos, catalogs, everything, ranchchannel.com. Jorgensen Land and Cattle presents the 52nd annual Top Cut Production Sale Monday, April 15th at the Jorgensen Land and Cattle Sale Facility in Ideal, South Dakota. Selling over 150 registered Angus bulls from the herd packed by seven generations of selection. Bidding online at dvauction.com, videos and sale information at ranchchannel.com and jorgensenfarms.com. Timeless Angus genetics from Jorgensen Land and Cattle Company, America's number one source for bulls. 
Bills. Cryptosporidium coccidiosis scours. Do I have your attention now? Don't let scours affect you this calving season by feeding Pharmatan from Imogene ingredients. But you gotta get it into your cows now. I've been saying it a lot. Head to PharmatanUSA.com. Welcome back to the Ranch It Up radio show, the most information packed into a 30-minute program that you can find at your all things ranching newscast. And so glad to be hanging out with y'all. Questions, comments, concerns, criticisms, rants. It doesn't matter. Give us a shout at 707-RANCH-20. That's 707-726-2420. You can text to that number. Email is ranchitupshow at gmail.com. Prowling around social media at Ranch It Up Show, just west of Topeka, Kansas, is the small town of Paxico, Kansas, population 212. Now, come April 18th and 19th, the population more than doubles when bull buyers from across the country make their way to the Next Gen Cattle Company, a unique blend of seed stock being offered, Charlay, Next Gen Angus X Bulls, and Beefmaster Bulls. Derek Thompson, one of the founders of Next Gen Cattle Company, joins us today to share more about this unique blend of bulls. Hey, Derek, thanks for being on the program with us. I appreciate it. Beefmaster and Charlay to start out. Tell us more about this combination. Yeah, so we have a lot of relationships. Out, being down here in Orlando, Florida right now, one of our largest states is Florida, and do a lot of business in the southeast. You know, their calving windows, and when they ship their lightweight calves, it works out really well for our feed yards. So we've always had a, a, done a lot of business in the southeast, and they use a lot of eared cattle. And in our opinion, Beefmaster is a tremendous eared breed, and that's why we, that's why we have them. So uh, kind of tell me the stretch and the reach of, of where, where you will first kind of market Beefmaster, first and foremost. You know, they thrive in harsh environments. Uh, so I think if you drew a line from Florida to Oregon and south uh, is where primarily uh, the breed is located. Uh, for anywhere from high desert uh, to the southern parts of Louisiana and tough, tough uh, marshy country in south Florida. Uh, but we have a lot of them throughout Kansas and Missouri. They thrive really well in fescue. And you said all the way up to Oregon? Yeah, all the way. Sold a lot of beef masters up in the Oregon and high desert country and, you know, 75 acres to a pair type country where they got to go out and bring back a live calf. And, uh, you know, with the three way cross and they're just a hardy, uh, great maternal breed uh, that, that bring a lot of value to today's cattlemen and women. Now, taking two breeds and putting these together, beef master and Charlay having two very different breeds. I mean, about as different. You know, we're talking, if you want science, we're talking a boss Taurus connection and we're talking a boss indicus connection on the other side uh the two breeds tell me about uh why why the two breeds together that you're offering to people like me yeah it's a great question so we feel like we went out and chose the two uh breeds that fit what we're looking for and that's a dynamic feeder calf uh we chose what we feel like is the best maternal breed in the beef master and we feel like the charlet offers a ton of benefits on the terminal side so our big deal at next gen is to go out and create the best mama cow for your environment and then bring a terminal cross over the top of them and create a feeder calf that is going to be you know highly sought after uh, to the feed yard industry now, in the last few years, NextGen has done, uh, and your team has done a, an amazing job of exposure, I'm going to say. Uh, the, the logo, the little NG, I, okay, there it is, the NG. I mean, there's been a lot of exposure about, uh, you know, what you all are doing and why you're doing it. But the big question that I have, and I'm just coming at you from a commercial cattle producer, and I shouldn't say just, I should say that with pride. I'm a commercial producer. So do you have programs for your bull buyers where you can help market those feeder cattle? You can, or at least add another option or you've got connections with buyers or feed yards. Do you have buyback programs? Because to me, Derek, that's where the rubber meets the road when I'm trying to go out and find those breeders that I want to buy bulls from. If they can provide me with a potential another option, they're going to get my money. Yeah, no, it's a, we do have a buyback program. We buy feeder cattle every week. Uh, we're in the market every week, and we prefer, number one, is to buy our genetics back. Uh, so we buy a lot of cattle off ranches uh, all throughout the country. Uh, we have multiple grow yards to work with and then ultimately end up at our finish and feed yard in southwest Kansas. But, yeah, the, the, the thing with most commercial producers is they really, truly never know how their cattle perform on the rail. And one, I think the biggest benefit we can provide 
is that har- carcass data and the harvest data back, how they perform in the feed yard and how they perform on the rail. And if you have your cattle individually tagged, we can give you individual carcass data. So our goal is to help our commercial cow-calf producers become better, create better genetics that ultimately are going to roll uphill and make it better for us to feed them. And ultimately the, the packer wins at the end of the day with better genetics on the rail. So there's a lot that goes into that, but yeah, absolutely. If you want your scorecard on how your cattle are performing, we can give it to you every time. So uh, if taking this one step further, then there's the opportunity. Obviously, you're tracking your genetics on the Beefmaster and on the Charlay side. You're tracking those genetics on the rail. You're giving me that data back. Then is there uh, assistance that your team has with this is what my cow herd is? This is maybe historically what I've been producing. Here is maybe an option of these kinds of bulls or these bloodlines or maybe you're kind of maybe going down the feed efficiency road that you're able to make a little bit more statistical match versus, oh, I just like that. Absolutely. And we work with Neogen. And even if you want to take it to the next level, you can DNA your cow herd and we can send those off and get commercial EPDs through Neogen, which goes into bull selection. But yeah, you can, it depends how far the producer wants to take it. I do think that's where... Maybe how far the producer should take it, right, right, right? Yeah, we're never going to tell them what they, what they have to do. But if they want to get to cutting edge and ultimately ultimately get paid the most for your calf crop, you got to invest in technology and genetics. And, and there, we have tons of platforms that can help you do that. You've got a bull sale coming up. Give me some details about it. Yeah, April 19th and 20th in the Flint Hills of Kansas. We'd love to have a great time the day before. Uh, it's, it's, it's also a great networking opportunity. There'll be three to 400 people from all across the country. Uh, we have food trucks set up. We have a live band. Have a great time and uh, sell bulls on that Friday morning. We're going to sell around 250 bulls. Uh, Angus Charlet Beefmaster. And uh, we'd love to have you. It's a great way to network and and to hear more about our buyback program and everything we have to offer. Order buyers there as well if you need to be on the phone. But, yeah, multiple ways to to get her done. We have free delivery to the bull uh, all across the country. Uh, One of the beauties of being in the the feeder calf business is we got trucks all over at all times. So we'll get the animals dropped off to you as well. And uh, you mentioned Angus, so you've got the Angus in the mix as well. Yep, we, be, we we got a small Angus operation we're building, and then with our partnership with ABS, uh, we with our next gen Angus X, we have uh, we'll have about eighty five uh, terminal sim Angus bulls as well. So tell me about the next gen Angus X. Yeah, so it's a partnership. We uh, had the opportunity about eighteen months ago uh, to get caught up with ABS and and sign an exclusive deal to have rights to their new era line of genetics. It's a it's a juiced up. Uh, terminal sim angus animal uh the the uh the data coming out of the feed yards are, are phenomenal obviously been big in the beef on dairy space but we're uh having the opportunity to take this into the beef side of things and in seller genetics and it's it's going incredibly well the fourth annual flint hill spring classic is april 18th and 19th at the next gen sale facility in paxico kansas Check out nextgencattle.com for more information and bidding and buying available at dvauction.com and Superior Livestock. Up next, market reports, market recaps, updates, and much more when we come back right here on the Ranch It Up Radio Show. Hey, it's Mark Van Z with LivestockMarket.com. Every week we hear from one of our great partners with updates, info, schedules, reports, and everything in between when it comes to buying and selling livestock and hay online and private treaty. LivestockMarket.com. South Devon, pound maker and navigator genetics from the nation's premier South Devon breeder, DLCC Ranch. Join the crew on Saturday, April 20th at the ranch in Piers, Minnesota. Sale information at dlccranch.com, ranchchannel.com, and bidding available through Superior Livestock Auction. When genetics matter, use an outcross of South Devon Genetics from the DLCC Ranch. Increase herd performance, complement your forages, get more cows bred. It's upcycling and efficiency, powered by Westway Feed Products. At Westway Feed Products, we create cow herd efficiency one lick at a time. 
Why not give Gelbvi and Balancer Bulls a try this year? Raise replacement females with added fertility, increased longevity, and greater productivity. Get increased performance, improve feed efficiency, and increase the carcass merit. Maximize crossbreeding with Gelbvi and Balancer. At Allied Genetic Resources, it's all about commercial customer success. We see that charge, we understand that charge, and we're going to use all the tools we can to get there. To maximize heterosis, purchase your next herd sire from an Allied Genetic Resources partner, Just head to AlliedGeneticResources.com. This is John Fisher with Stockman's Livestock and Dickinson. Thursday, March 14th, we had a feeder cattle and grass cattle special. Sold right at 4,221 head for the day. They were all feeder cattle. We did not have any way-ups for the day. Very strong market. I had a lot of guys sitting in here trying to buy grass cattle. A lot of them good five, six, seven weight cattle uh, bring good money. It all the way trickled down to the bigger cattle. Uh, These guys selling some fat cattle down in the uh, corn belt. They're getting their fat sold pretty darn good now, so they're uh, laying in these... uh, bigger cattle and paying for them. Give you a little rundown on how we got along today. Had a consignment of 61 black and baldy steers, weighed 434. They brought 383. Had another nice deal with some steers. They weighed uh, 38 head of them, weighed 525 at 360. A really nice deal, 57 head, weighed 546, brought 348. Another consignment of 27 head uh, steers, uh, weighed 566 at 345.50. Big string of steers, 82 head of them, weighed six and a quarter, uh, brought 315.50. And had a really long string of steers, a 219 head in this consignment. Blacks and baldies, they weighed 664 at 305.50. Getting into some of them bigger cattle, had a consignment of 35 black and baldy steers, weighed 749, brought 279 and a quarter. 42 good black steers weighed 791 to 261. And then we had a load of 60 head of black and baldy steers, weighed 939, bring 241 and a quarter. Over on the heifers, had a good uh, market on them too. 36 black and baldy heifers weighed 485, brought 317. 81 black and baldy heifers from Kildeer weighed 561 at 308.50. 80 black and baldy heifers from Dickinson weighed 637 at 281.5. And And had a big long string of 219 black and baldy heifers weighed 720. They brought 260. And then on the bigger end of it, we had 66 black and baldy heifers weighed 822, bring 231. And that's how we got along for the market. Hey all, Mark Van Zee with LivestockMarket.com. Coming up this Wednesday, March 27th, we have an online hay auction. Got about 1,500 bales of alfalfa, grass, and straw. Large squares, rounds, and small squares. Bidding opens at just a dollar a bale, no reserves. All the lots will sell. Featured lots include 182 large square bales of sorghum sedan. Selling on 26 bale lots, it's 4x4, four four, sweet leaf sorghum sedan grass, fine stem, low nitrates, 1,000 pound bales from Orange Hay Company in Keensburg, Colorado. 145 large round bales of Orchard Timothy mix. Selling on 30 bale lots, it's 4x5, individually poly wrapped, fertilized, uh, and most of it was cut here in August of 2023 from West Meadow Farm in New York. 800 bales of Three string small square alfalfa orchard timothy mix. Now it's selling on 400 bale lots. It's first cutting. The bales weigh 95 pounds from Reamer Farms in Gary Owen, Montana. 90 small square brome bales, second cutting grass, nice soft hay from HPL Auctions in Union, Iowa. 90 large round bales of corn stalks selling on 30 bale lots. It's five by five, net wrapped, baled in 2022 from HPL Auctions in Union, Iowa. 114 large square alfalfa bales. Selling on 57 bale lots, it's 3 by 3 by 8, the bales weigh 850 pounds, it's fine stem and was grown at 7,000 feet of elevation from Double Seven Cattle in Farson, Wyoming. 50 small square wheat straw bales, it's 2023 wheat, polytwine binding from Berry Parts and Equipment in Quizzen, Illinois. And 20 large round alfalfa brome bales, selling on 10 bale lots, it's 5 by 6, net wrapped, it's a mix of fine first cutting and second cutting. It's been stored inside from Brookville Farm Equipment in Polo, Illinois. Bidding is currently live, but all lots will sell the morning of Wednesday, March 27th. Got hay to sell? Online hay auctions every Wednesday on LivestockMarket.com and AuctionTime.com. How does one go about finding their role on a family operation? Chelsea Erdman shares her experience and several tips in this episode of Casual Cattle Conversations. So I say the word work or the phrase work my way up with a grain of salt. So we all have put in our time differently. We all have different strengths. And I think that sometimes it's easy to get hung up on, did you start at the bottom 
and work your way up? Or have you come in a side door or have you worked your way in differently than working your way up? So it's kind of on the cow side too. We grew up with short-term cows. My parents or my dad and my grandpa got sick when I was young. So they sold their keeper herd and then we just got short-term cows. Calving short-term cows is very different than calving a, a herd that you keep forever. So that was something that we learned growing up and working into it. And some of us enjoy the cows more and some of us enjoy the farm more. So we just worked our way in, I would say, to the business differently. We do. Listen to the full story by searching for Casual Cattle Conversations on your favorite podcast player. Happy ranching, folks. I tip my hat to you from one legend to another. Before we say fare thee well, want to give a big old tip of the hat to all of you that came to the need of others. We're talking about the wildfires that affected Texas. Thank you for lending your support, providing pastures, providing hay, even offering some financial assistance. Thank you for all you did. And now that's going to wrap it up for today. A big thanks from our crew to yours, starting out with Derek Thompson with Next Gen Cattle Company, Bryce Kelly with Richie Livestock ID for the update, Shea Keister Warner with Casual Cattle Conversations, Kirk Donsbach with Stonex Financial Incorporated, Mark Vanzi with LivestockMarket.com, John Fisher with Stockman's Livestock Exchange, and the boss lady, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck. A big thank you to our partners, RanchChannel.com, the world-famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sale, the DLCC Ranch, Jorgensen Land and Cattle, Stockman's Livestock Exchange, the American Galvey Association, Imogene Ingredients, Farmatan, Westway Feed Products, Medora Boot and Western Wear, Allied Genetic Resources, Allied Feeding Partners, LivestockMarket.com, EquineMarket.com, AuctionTime.com, RFD TV, Wrangler, and this fine radio station. And crew, so glad you all came with us one more time as we ranch it up. Be sure to follow and like us on Facebook at Ranch It Up Show. Our email is ranchitupshow at gmail.com. And you can call and you can text us 24 7 at 707 Ranch 20. That's 707 726 2420. Spread the good word and join us again next week where it's always Tigger and Beck approved. Stay ranchy and ranch it up. 